In the past week or so, we've all received polling cards for a neighbourhood plan referendum for Stamford. And also, at the same time, we've also had leaflets through about the proposal to develop Stamford North. This has caused some confusion in people's minds, and I've seen a lot of posts on social media, and I've had people email me asking for explanations as to exactly what's going on. So I thought I'd make this a video explainer to try and explain it all. So, the first thing to bear in mind is that we already have a South Kestevan local plan. This is the basic planning document which sets out how development should be carried out in the district, including Stamford, up until 2036. This is a statutory document. It went through all the stages of consultation and approval by Michael Gove, Secretary of State, and it came into force in January 2020. In that plan, Stamford North is an allocated site for 1,300 homes. And the plan sets out a number of policies to be applied when the site is developed. These include that the development shall make provision for a new primary school, the development shall make provision for contributions towards the expansion or improvement of the Stanford Welland Academy, and should make provision for a local centre to serve the needs of both existing and new residents to the area. The policy also states that a high-level master plan supported by a detailed development brief, appropriate full transport assessment and phasing plan is required for the entire site. So that's what the local plan says, and it can't be amended or altered anytime soon. So what is the neighbourhood plan? Well, neighbourhood plans were introduced in 2011. Stamford has never had one before. A neighbourhood plan, by definition, is prepared and written by the neighbourhood, in this case, via Stamford Town Council. And it sets out additional policies which should apply on top of the local plan. And that's the important thing to remember. It is not able to contradict the local plan, only to set further conditions which are consistent with the local plan. So the neighbourhood plan says things like this about Stamford North. Streets should meet the technical highways requirements as well as be considered as an urban space to be used for all not just motor vehicles development adjoining public open spaces and important gaps should enhance the character of these spaces by either providing a positive interface or a soft landscaped edge any loss of trees or woodland as a result of the proposed development should be replaced by native species etc etc neighborhood plans do make up part of the development framework for the district and therefore all planning applications, by law, should be determined after taking into account the policies in the neighbourhood plan. The law states that a neighbourhood plan can only come into force following a local referendum, and so that is why we are having a referendum on this neighbourhood plan on the 14th of July. If it is approved at referendum, then it, like the local plan, will apply until 2036. So, if the referendum is approved on the 14th of July, we will then have two sets of policies relating to what should happen at Stamford North, one set in the South Stephen local plan and a further set in the Stamford neighbourhood plan. However, nothing can actually happen until a planning application or applications have been submitted by the landowner and approved by SKDC's planning committee. And the consultation which is currently taking place on behalf of the landowner, the Burley House Preservation Trust, through their agent, Gummer Leiths, is the first step in preparing that planning application to go in. The consultation which is taking place at the moment by them is known as a pre-application consultation. And these are carried out by developers to prove that they have consulted with the community before submitting their application. So I hope that explains what's happening now in July with the neighbourhood plan referendum and the consultation being carried out about the development at Stamford North. So what happens next? Well, earlier on I mentioned that one of the planning policies for Stamford North that's in the local plan is that there should be this comprehensive master plan for the whole site. 
That doesn't yet exist and is being drafted at the moment, and the draft will be considered by South Stephen's cabinet in September prior to being adopted, possibly with a public consultation beforehand. Once adopted, this master plan will be another set of policies which must be applied when considering the planning applications which will be submitted to actually build on Stamford North. And then, after that, the local plan itself is up for revision and there will be a consultation on that later in the year to review the local plan and to update it to run to 2041. This revision has to go through various stages beyond the consultation and is expected to be adopted in January 2025. I've tried to make this video as factual as possible and avoid voicing my own opinions. I will do that elsewhere as I can't duck the issues of the additional infrastructure needed for schools, doctor surgeries, hospitals and roads. I will do that elsewhere. All I will add here is, I hope, a note of some reassurance. SKDC's recently published five-year housing supply estimate shows that it expects only 170 of the 1,300 homes to be completed by 2026-27. So there is no sudden overwhelming of our current facilities in a very short space of time. That will not happen. And it means that we have time to phase in all of the necessary infrastructure as Stamford North grows to completion. I hope you found this video useful. And if you have any questions at all, please do not hesitate to contact me by email. Thank you.